Okay, this morning we're starting work our Variatus. Let's talk real quickly about species. There is a species in the genus Zephophorus, which includes platys and sword tails, called Zephophorus Variatus. The fish we're working today are not pure Variatus. And in fact, most of the Variatus in the hobby are not. They're hybrids. So we don't call these Zephophorus variatus, we call them variatus platys, but not Zephophorus variatus. We don't give them a scientific name. We're working with our flame and flame tuxedo variatus this morning. Let's take a look at, I've pulled a few out. Okay, what we have, this is a flame male, nice big male. This is another flame male, actually has a little bit better color than the other one. This is a flame female. They tend to be a little bit duller. This is another female. Then we have the tuxedos. Those two males are high fin flame tuxedos. Let's see, I think I've got a, I guess I've got all high fins there. This is a female, again, a little bit duller color. The genetics are interesting. I guess I ought to do a whiteboard on this. Susie's shaking her head no. So I guess what I'll do is discuss it now. We isolated these fish originally from our red-tailed black variatus, which tend to have a lot of red in the body. I found these fish that have a brighter red, and it turns out that I'm pretty sure that's a dominant allele, just judging from what we get out of our breeder vats. So the bright red is dominant over the kind of dull red of a that you get in red tail black variatus. The tuxedo pattern, which is the black on the side, is also a dominant characteristic. So that fish is homozygous for non-tuxedo. This fish is either homozygous for tuxedo or heterozygous for tuxedo because that's a dominant characteristic. If it has one copy of tuxedo, it'll be a tuxedo. So we've split these two lines up and get about 95% of tuxedos in the tuxedos and just flames in the flames. So I'm going to get these guys set up for breeding. In our breeding colonies, I'm using only high fin males. I do have some small breeding colonies set up that have females, but as we get more and more females, I'll do that. High fin, by the way, is in Zephophrines, Swordtails and Platys is a, with an exception I'll deal with some other time, is a dominant homozygous lethal. If a fish inherits a high fin from both its mother and father, what well, doesn't become a fish, it dies into the, as an embryo. So this High fin male right here is heterozygous for high fin. You want to come in on him, Susie? He's heterozygous for high fin. He's most likely homozygous for flame. And he's it can be either heterozygous or homozygous for tuxedo. This fish, of course, it doesn't have high fin. We know that because it's a dominant gene, he would have a high fin if he had inherited it. So he's homozygous for non-high fin. He's at least heterozygous for flame, and he's homozygous for non-tuxedo, because if he had one copy of tuxedo, he would be a tuxedo. Okay, good variatus keeping. See you next time. This is the whiteboard presentation for our flame tuxedo variatus, flames and flame tuxedos actually. We're going to deal with three genes today. We're going to deal with bright, which converts a red to the flame, the bright red, tuxedo, and high fin. Bright, it, I've determined, is a dominant allele, and I'll go over why I know that in a moment. Tuxedo, I've always known as a dominant allele. I think it's in the, you know, in the literature, but I could determine that in a, just by some matings. And then high fin, which 
in ZIF offerings with an exception that I'm not going to deal with today. Hyphen is a dominant allele, but it is a homozygous lethal. Homozygous means you get two of the same genes because you inherit a gene from your mother and a gene from your father. And if we mate two heterozygous brights together, we get a three to one bright to dull ratio. And this is a Punnett square that shows that. So this, the male fish is usually on top, has one allele for bright, one allele for dull, which I've done as a, well, that should be a, a D there. I changed my mind on the, on how to represent this. Okay, so half of the sperm are going to have the gene for bright, half are going to not have the gene for bright, half the eggs are going to have the, the gene or allele for, for bright, and half won't. And so just by random combination, you end up with three brights to one dull on average. So a three to one ratio. Same thing with tuxedo. If you have two heterozygous tuxedos, you get a three to one ratio. But in high fin, you get a two to one ratio because that fish, the fish that inherits, uh, or the, the, the egg that's fertilized by, that is carrying high fin, that's fertilized by a sperm carrying high fin, doesn't develop, it's dead as an embryo. And so you get the two to one ratio. We'll deal with this down in a minute. That's, that's what a geneticist calls a dihybrid cross. But let's talk a little bit about how I know bright. By the way, I, I've, bright isn't a characteristic that I'd seen in this fish before. It uh, appeared in our red-tailed black variatus, which ha are, have tuxedo and kind of a, a reddish body red to gold body and as I recall I'd have to go back to the records but I think it was a single fish and I was sorting found it, it bright separated it out gave, gave it mates and looked it up and what what I found is if you mate two non-brights together you never get a bright except for if there were a mutation like did occur in our, our fish but mutations are not that common and, and they're random. If you mate two brights together, sometimes you get non-brights. You get this situation where the male and female are each heterozygous and one quarter of the offspring of their offspring are going to be non-bright, be dull. Same thing with tuxedo. I mean, the literature has talked about tuxedo being a dominant allele for decades, but if you didn't know that, yeah, and you had a couple tuxedo fish and they happened to be heterozygous, you'd get this three to one ratio, three tuxedos to, to a non-tuxedo. If, if the reverse were true, uh, let's say that we have a population of non-bright dull fish. They're never going to produce, except for that rare, very rare mutation, any brights. And the same thing with non-tuxedos. You make non-tuxedos together, you'll never get a tuxedo. High fins, the same, same thing. You make two high fins together and you'll never get a, a high fin. Now, one thing you can do, and we do pretty frequently with our high fins, is we use high fin males on non-high fin females. In that case, you get a, a one to one ratio. You get 50% high fins, but the best mating uh, for high fins is high fin to high fin, and you get two thirds, uh, get this two to one ratio. Okay, now one thing I know by going through our, through these matings is that e each of these genes is on a separate chromosome. Humans have 46 chromosomes, 23 pairs. Interestingly enough, Ziphophorines, Sortils, Platys also have 23 pairs, so 46 chromosomes. If these, if tuxedo and bright were on the same chromosome, then they would get inherited together, but they're, it's, they don't. And 
you can determine this by producing, this is a dihybrid cross. We're looking at two genes. We're not going to look at three. We're not, we're just going to look at Bright and Texo. We're not going to look at Hyphen because I'd have to build a 64 square planet square to, to show that. So if you take a, a heterozygous Bright and a fish that's heterozygous for bright and heterozygous for tuxedo, a male and a female, each like that. The male produces sperm that are carrying bright and tuxedo, bright and non-tuxedo, dull and tuxedo, dull and non-tuxedo. The same thing with the female. If you get this out, just so you don't have to read this, if you count up the squares, nine of the 16 are going to be bright tuxedos. Three will be bright non-tuxedos, and three will be dull tuxedos, and one, this one down here, because it inherits the allele for dull and non-tuxedo from the father and from the mother, will be a dull non-tuxedo. The reason that if we try to do three genes, with basically, you, if you look at two, you're looking at four squares. And let's see, is that right? <laughs> yes, four squared. It would be four cubed or 64 squares to do all three of them together. What we do in our selection, we try to have high fin breeders. We try to have all tuxedo breeders and we try to try to have all bright fish. So we go through and select bright tuxedo high fins as our breeders. And then we get this distribution at worst. But uh, if we happen to have homozygous brights, homozygous tuxedos, then we, we get all bright tuxedos and two out of three of them will be high fins. Okay, I hope I didn't confuse y'all too much. It's, it's, I'm used to this, so I tend to, to, to take shortcuts. But uh, this kind of illustrates we're selecting for three separate genes that are on different chromosomes at the same time. Good fish keeping.